gamers today we're doing is xop or does my sieb suck and in this one we got tobal from hungary playing as rus versus augustin from uh well i don't know where, where he's from <laughs> but he is playing chinese now tobal do you have any questions for me in the chat feel free to tag me and let me know if you have any specific questions but let's check if china is busted or does rus suck there's no third option. Uh, Tobal is gold, just so you guys know. Uh, this one should have probably been a, a lumber camp and this should have probably been a house because this lumber camp only is close to one tree. So if you put a lumber camp here, you would cover four trees basically, three, four trees. So yeah, it's a minor thing you can do, but obviously everything counts, right? Every little improvement and everything counts. So I saw that you made a scout uh from the tc and you also want to try and make another scout from the hunting cabin when you play Rus. So like time. always i always advise people to check uh the Rus builder guide that i have and also check everything you need to know about Rus that i released uh recently so it can help you a little bit as well all right so let's see the scouting Okay, this is the live version of the game so you can still tag wolves and drag them to your TC obviously in the new patch That will not be possible. So Rus actually gains an advantage in that because Rus has three scouts where most civs will have only two scouts against Rus So you can actually hunt deer with two scouts and you can have one scout permanently uh, perma killing the uh, wolves because like I said uh, in the new patch, the wolves, when you pull them, they will go chase your scout a bit and then they're going to return to normal location like the boar do. So, Rus actually gets like a mini buff regarding um, resource gathering in the new patch. Okay, there's the third scout. It's a bit delayed, but it's there. And make sure you start your wheelbarrow whenever you get uh, enough wood. So, whenever you get 50 wood, 150 gold, you want to start your wheelbarrow as well. So far, looking good. One thing that's going to greatly improve your income in the early game is trying to get these sheep to go, uh, like, selecting all the sheep and kind of clicking them right here. So, like, right there, uh, because right now they have a little bit of a travel time, and that might not seem like a big deal, but it actually is for food gathering, especially in the early game. I got the feedback from my scout is sucked at the later phases of the game. You can give some tips on how to scout once the map is revealed. All right, let's check. Um, okay. That could have been a yoink scout. You got 155 bounty. You got this deer pack. Uh, oh, you didn't see this deer pack. I hate when this happens. This happens to me sometimes too. You scout your whole side of the map and then there's a deer pack like in the, in the, the edge of the map that you don't see. This should not happen by the way. And the way to fix this is very simple. You just shift Q attack. So if this scout was here, don't send it there and that's it. Just shift Q like here and then all the way around so that it fully explores the area without you paying attention to it while you're doing the other stuff. Okay, Golden Gate. Make sure there's two spaces between your TC and your landmark so that you can put in farms around the TC. That's another thing you can do. But other than that, I mean, your bounty is going well. Um, I mean, you're getting over 300. That's really good for one-on-one. -on -one. And you're actually going to have even more than that. Uh, if you are going for the boar, which it's, it, this seems like a second TC or boar build. Not sure which one it is. Uh, you have five on food. You put five if you're going to go for a knight or six even. But yeah, this is something you can fix very easily. That's why I'm talking about it. Because this is like super easy to fix. You just pull your sheep a bit closer and it will greatly, greatly improve your eco. Alright, let's speed it up. You can already replace the lumber camp. This is quite far already. So you could plop down another uh, a lumber camp right here. Yeah, this is, a, this is a boar build. This is not a second TC build. Or this is a... It's a boar build without a TC. You want to build these with, with two villagers. Two or three villagers is fine. So you can get your wood uh, income ASAP. Our very, the best spot for this boar would have been here. 
because you can put the hunting cabin here and you'll get gold income from both of these little tree lines. Technically, you can still put it here. See that? You agreed with me, but the board placement did not agree with me. So, uh, yeah. Good hunting cabin placement, uh, not the good board placement. So there we go. So again, this might not seem like a big deal, but it is. It's uh, quite a bit of income loss. Okay, you replaced the lumber camp. Very nice. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go on about this more. I've said what I have to say. But, I, I mean, you got... So far, considering your gold, I would say this is pretty good early game. Look at that. You even micring and shit? Okay, there. Are you smurfing and gold or what's up? So far, so good. You are playing against China. What do you see? You see a tower. Why Why is there a tower there? That's what I want to know. What the fuck is this tower? Okay, this guy's just building towers around. For vision, I guess. Okay. I mean, right now, honestly, for... Like, you're doing everything right. Obviously, you're following a guide, right? Because, um, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to. Which is good. I would assume you're following a guide unless you've, you know, invented the same build that exists. Uh, obviously, you are not executing it at a, at a conquer level, but you're executing it really well for gold, I would say. And you have extremely high bounty. Like, this is really, really high bounty. Another another trick you can use, if you notice that your bounty is, is this close, you can kill three sheep and you can push the bounty to 500. So yeah, so far I think this is a good, this is a, a pretty solid game for me. Okay, so you asked me how to improve your scouting. This is the easiest way to improve your scouting in any RTS game. When you play the game, I want you to actively ask yourself, like literally say it out loud in whatever language you want. Do I know what my opponent is doing right now? If the answer is no, you need to scout. Okay, so if you look at your vision, do I know what my opponent is doing right now? No, you don't, right? You, you see a Barbican, you see gold mining, but you have never checked uh, stone, right? Oh my god, look at this mining camp, Kek W. You've never checked um, um, mining camp. You haven't checked if he's maybe has stables or something, although you see the barracks here. But you don't get the full picture. So that's how you improve your scouting. You make sure that you know what the opponent is doing. Maybe put even a little post-it note. This is what I used to tell people in StarCraft. You can put a post-it note on your monitor that says, Do I know what the opponent's doing? If the answer is no, you need to scout. You need to know what the opponent is doing. Otherwise, you're playing blindly and you might be like just killing yourself, basically. All right. Also, it's very important when you play the game, you need to know what your goal is, right? So right now, no matter what you scout, you need to know what your goal is. Is your goal to attack? Is your goal to take to castle? What is my goal? If your goal is to attack, you need to add more production already. You need more wood. You need to produce... If you're going knights, you need to produce archers. If your goal is to tech up, you need to produce a knight or two, harass, and then go to castle. So you need to... And this goes for all of you, not just, not just for Tobo. You need to know what your goal is. This is extremely, extremely important in RTS games. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, how are you going to win, right? If you're just, like, let's say you're just playing the game and this is your vision. What are you doing, right? Are you gonna, do you make an army? Do you not make an army? So that's something that you guys should uh, try to figure out and decide for yourselves. Now, you might say, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do, right? And that's a valid thing to say. Just pick, right? From here on out, just say, I'm gonna all in and just all in. It's not wrong. Or you can say, I'm gonna rush castle. Then rush castle, but commit to it. Don't go this middle of the road like, I guess some floating resources, I'll, uh, I'll go castle. Or I'll get some floating resources, I'll add five barracks, you know? So make sure uh, that you know what you want to do and what your goal is. And this goes for any league, by the way. This goes for pro level, this goes for bronze. 
You can you can be gold and execute it poorly, but just knowing what you're doing will help you an insane amount. All right. And once you scout what your opponent is doing, I recently released a counter list, a unit counter list that's that was posted on my YouTube, so you can check if you see Spearman Archer, you can go on that list and see what counters that. So if you if they go Spearman Archer, uh, you can go Knight Archer. You kill Spearman with archers, and then knights clean up everything else. Okay, so you see the archery range here as well. This is a I'll say a weird uh, build for men. So right now you see some spearmen. Let me check your uh, let me check your camera. Okay, you you look at it, right? You saw spearmen. You just saw the archer range as well, so you know what this is about, right? You have a scout here. Your scouting is fine. It can be better, obviously, but you're gold. For gold, I think your scouting is fine. You have a scout on the stone. You can click on the stone, and you can see he doesn't have enough for TC. And you're going there with knight, I would assume, because that's open. You saw spearman, you saw archer range. And you made a second TC meanwhile, which is also good. That's good. You bought the resource, you made a second TC. Poggers. Uh, this needs a mining camp, for sure. So, okay, good. Good. This is good response. Uh, if you have the APM, you want to put one worker to each archery range instead of four on the same archery range going in circles. If you have APM and if you can do it, because you will produce the buildings actually faster. Yeah, you got to constantly produce villagers. That is a very, very important thing. Uh, if you're bad with macro, you can see both TCs are idle. If you're bad with macro, where you're struggling to constantly produce stuff, just queue up the units, right? Don't queue up one villager at a time, just queue up five at each TC. Because right now you're floating 900 food and you missed one, two, three villager worth of production. So just queue up five villagers in each TC. You're going to spend 500 food and you might be like, oh, but that's a bad thing to do. It is, but it's way worse to not be producing villagers at all. Because then you're further falling behind in eco. Okay, raid. Good, good. Very good raid. That knight paid off for itself. Got like four, five, six villagers. Losing two knights into spearmen. Not so great. Killing a scout. Overall, I would say pretty good trades for you. You have the second TC. And you should know that he doesn't have a second TC because he just got it at enough stone. And he was already making units. So. You know that the push is coming. You're producing units. See, this is what I mean. Do the same thing with your villagers. This is bad to do in the grand scheme of things. But if you're floating resources, just queue up. Yeah, you're playing way better than him right now. I don't know how you lose. I'm assuming you don't know what how to finish the game. But you're playing way better than him. Uh, you want to get uh, Iron Undermash for plus one armor against range. Because against... Uh, Chukinu or Jukinu, this is the best upgrade you can get. And yeah, you should get these upgrades first. Very important. Unless you're about to kill your opponent, get these two first. Um, one thing you can do, by the way, remember, you can always rebuild the scout to have one scout with your main army so you can see more. Because right now you're playing pretty blind. You don't see much. But you can always just rebuild the scout. And speed up. You're not getting... These upgrades are incredibly important. Incredibly important. Incredibly important. These two. These two specifically against what he has and what you have. See, right now what's happening... Okay, you're going with rams. And I know where you're going to... I already know where you're going to attack. You're going to attack right here. Oh... Okay, well that is a problem. Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to say. I 100% know. I don't I don't even need to ask you. I know you were going to attack here. Right? I mean, you're building rams right here. Where are you going to go? This is the part where I say you need to know what your goal is and where you're attacking. This 
think about this. When you attack, you need to ask yourself, what do I do if I win this position? Like, AoE 4 strategy games are like chess, you're winning positions. If you destroy this, what do you get? You kill a barracks, and you destroy or you prevent gold mining, that's it. He doesn't need gold even. I don't know why he's mining it, he has 1.2k. On the other hand, this is easy to pick off. This is five houses, blacksmith, tower for some reason. And an archer range that you can pick off without uh, without much effort, right? Because there's nothing defending it. There's this tower that's upgraded and that's it. Or you could have gone to the wood line and prevent wood chopping. Or you could have checked the food sources in the back if he's gathering any food sources here. So the, the sources you want to attack are either production if it's open, uh, food, or wood in this specific matchups, and honestly in most other matchups as well. You try to attack the point that's like, this is the most defensive point, but it's actually the most useless at the same time because he doesn't cover anything. That doesn't cover anything important, that is. Obviously, you didn't pay attention to your army here, and that's why you lost the engagement, so... You know, it is what it is. Like, I'm not gonna bash onto that too much, because it's like... Yeah, don't, you know, don't lose your army. Um, so, yeah. Alright. I see that copy paste in the chat. I don't know what it is, but uh, I see it's going strong. Um... You have 16 on wood. What you could do, you could also add a couple more production. If you see that you're constantly floating production or having too many units queued, you can also add another one or two archer ranges, another stable. But honestly, your macro seems fine. Like, again, not perfect, but I think it is fine. Um, for gold, I think you're doing a lot of the stuff correctly. And even people in the chat said, I don't know how you lost this. And uh, I guess we're about to find out. All you gotta do with these archers in, is kill the spearmen. Okay, you're getting these now. These are very, very late. Where are you looking right now? Mm, that is your struggle. And that is why... Okay. Okay. Now imagine if you had that previous army that basically died for free. I don't think you've killed much. You would literally have 40 units more uh, than he did. Thank you. I will check in. You literally had you would literally have like 40 units more than he did. You could pop like five. Um, you could pop five rams, and you could just finish the game from then on out. So. That is a, a big thing. I will say, um, I think your your macro and your build order is a lot better than um, than your rank. But your problem mainly is the engagement, from what I'm seeing from this game. Maybe in the other games you had a lot better engagement. But from what I'm seeing here, um, is... Um, is the engagement is the issue and not necessarily the reason why you lost the game but it definitely put you really really far behind i'm trying to find uh sorry i'm tr i'm a bit distracted i'm trying to find check-in for this give me a moment okay there we go i found it there we go all right So yeah, you'll manage to clean this up, and I'm assuming he's gonna go castle now, and you're gonna die to an SDBs. Because that seems... Is he gonna castle? Oh no, he queued up a bunch of units just now. Yeah, he queued up a bunch of units. See how, how exposed this is? Look at your army, it's massive! Look at it! Oh, supply blocked. Okay, building houses. You got a lot of gold. So one thing you could have done here is bought food and went castle yourself. That's another possibility. Okay, archers to protect. 
Okay, still good. Okay. Good. Good, you keep pushing. He's making a keep. You destroy houses. You're double the supply! There's a nest of bees! Use C formation immediately. Immediately. Whenever you're playing against nest of bees or mangonels. Oof. Nest of bees. Oh no, oh no, oh no! You send these bad boys. These bad boys right here, they would pop that that nest of bees like this. And look what you're doing again, right? Same thing. You're attacking. Let's compare this. There's this position to attack. There's this position to attack. There's this position to attack. This position protects nothing except production buildings. If you attacked here, he would have no wood, like literally no wood. That's it. He would be cut off. If you attack here, he has no food. You attack the most... Uh, I mean, he also has a keep here. The most sieged up spot. And with Nest of Bees, it costs you the game. Nest of Bees doing work. You, you, I saw that you did have idle vill a lot of idle villagers, actually. You could have some bears here as well, still, by the way. You could also hit, take his uh, deer, by the way. If you have the map control like you did, you can also take his deer. And... Wow, look at these bears. It's so weird. They're, like, behind the tree line. Um, so you can delay your farm transition even more. Yeah, right now you're floating a lot of resources from that battle. So, I'll tell you a couple of the things that I noticed. A couple of things you're doing wrong that you can improve on. And the things that you're doing correct. Very pretty farms, I'll give you that. A plus for the farms. They pretty. They look pretty. And I'm assuming he's just going to push. Uh, this is a massive army now. Alright. So let's give Teal the R. And I'll go play the tournament. So, build order is fine. Not perfect, obviously, but it's fine. You have a, you know why your build order looks good? You have a clear goal. You know what you're doing. You know what you're going for. And that's why your early game looks good. You know what you're doing. You're getting the hunt. hunt. You got like 500 bounty. 545 bounty. So that part is great. You also allocate your villagers from TCs to the correct things. You did float a bit of resources, but you floated equal amount of resources in the early game from each resource, which is fine. Like, it's better to float 400, 400, 400 than floating 1,200 from one resource. You were replacing the lumber camps. That was good. You got wheelbarrow. You got the hunt. That was all great. You did the scouting initially. Remember the part where I told you, make sure you know what your opponent is doing. You did add the production. You could have added another stable and another archer range or two. You forgot the upgrades. That was the bad part. You needed to get this ASAP. And don't attack in the most fortified position unless that position is very important. If this Barbican was here and you were attacking into it, okay, that's fine. I would still advise to go for the wood line because why would you attack into Barbican? We can attack into wood line where there's nothing. But let's say you couldn't for some reason. That's a justifiable attack. You're attacking a food line, which is very important. No food, no tech up, no units. But this didn't protect anything. And it led you to you losing the game later because he put a keep here as well. Uh, one thing that I suggested to a lot of uh, people that have coached and, and helped in StarCraft 2 is... I, I could see that the moment the fight started happening, you started floating a lot of resources. 
So what you can do is if you know you're about to fight, if you're like, okay, my opponent's army is right there, my army is right here, you know you're about to fight. What you can do is pre-queue a bunch of units. So when you're fighting, you are not dropping, like you're not quitting the production, uh, you're not you know, delaying your production, the units keep coming, right? The units just keep pouring in. You will go back to stacking resources, but the unit production will not stop, which is the most important part. A lot of the low level players, uh, what they do is they attack, they win, but then they float so much and they don't have any units to go back to that the opponent beats them. So they say, why did I lose that, right? I won the battle, but he still won after. Yeah, because you didn't produce any units. So technically you killed units, but you had no backup units to finish the game. You had to rebuild again, and then opponent rebuilds again. And what's happening is the opponent is not floating, you are floating resources. You fight, and it's even again, even though you shouldn't be, right? So yeah, uh, I think overall for gold, I thought you played pretty well. And you lost in a silly way in a way. I feel that you should have still won. And if it was any other Civ that did not have Nest of Bees, you would have probably won with that push. You did run into Nest of Bees. Make sure you use the C formation, which is the spread formation, where the AoE from Nest of Bees and Mangonels would not do as much damage. It would help you a lot. And use your Knights to kill the Siege. Knights and Horsemen, hard counter the Siege. And you can just beat him down. He had no spearmen to counter your uh, knights in that moment. What you can also do, by the way, is if you're playing only rooster or cavalry sieves, um, you can also attack forward and send one or two knights back into their wood line or gold line or whatever to do the harassment as you're attacking. And this might be like, oh, that's, that's too much things to do. But it's going to be way harder for your opponents to defend than for you to shift click two knights around. Because he's going to need to defend the wood line, defend the forward, produce units, and panic at the same time. I think the, the main issue that you have that I would focus on the most is getting the upgrades at the correct time. Getting sheep closer to your TC and making sure you know where you're attacking. And fourth is uh, C formation and making sure you have better overview and control of your army when you're getting close to your opponent's base make sure you're paying attention to the army and try to do everything that you need to do before you're about to engage so don't try to engage and then oh i'm gonna go make a house just make three houses before you fight right obviously once you reach higher level you have to do all those things at the same time but in low leagues because you're already floating like i said pre-make stuff and then go into battle and have a hundred percent focus on the units and then your opponent will be stuck floating resources and all that. Um, but yeah, Tobal, thank you for submitting the, the replay. Uh, again, I do these live on Twitch. Uh, I don't have any specific dates when I'm doing them. I just do them whenever. And when I do do them, I do a giveaway. Anyone can enter into the giveaway. And today Tobal won. So he got the free, uh, whatever you want to co call it, the replay review, coaching, and whatever else. Uh, Tobal, thank you again, and I hope I helped you. If you're watching on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, let's play the tournament. Boom!